A shot of brutally arctic air on the way for millions of Americans, plus snow chances for others. Welcome in, folks. Happy Friday, December 12th. And uh, yeah, still tracking this wintry pattern. We've got uh, one of the coldest shots of air of the season so far on the way for many of us. And that will bring some snow chances. And many of us already have seen that snow this week. Uh, but yeah, tracking more of it here over the next couple of days. And then a bit of a pattern change we'll touch on. And when we could get back to the really cold and wintry side uh, towards the end of the video. Now, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte. If you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe and hit the bell for the latest notifications. Uh, doing all that, it's free, doesn't cost you a penny. All it does is help me continue to run this channel for free here on YouTube and get the word out to more folks. All right, with that said, let's dive right on into it and give you that forecast. Next to me is the latest run of our European model. And yeah, you see those very wintry blue, purples, and even some pinks and whites showing up there on the map. That is Arctic air diving down out of Canada through this week and even into early next week. And this will be some of the coldest air of the season. Sub-zero temperatures going to be on the way, potentially as far south as even parts of the Ohio Valley. So this is real, uh, you know, the real deal in terms of cold air. You can already see it out there right now starting to work its way in out of Canada. If you look up towards Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, uh, here is that shot of Arctic air starting to ooze south into the United States. And yeah, those single digit and sub-zero temperatures working in with it. And uh, a little bit of a warm up out ahead of this down south, but you can see it's not lasting long as that Arctic boundary is quickly pushing south and bringing that brutal cold with it. As I mentioned, it's also going to bring some snow. In fact, a bit of a fun little surprise snow into portions of the Carolinas today, at least North Carolina, up into Virginia. We've had some snow from Roanoke, Danville, even had some grapple or some light snow into the Charlotte Metro up towards Mooresville, uh, Cornelius now towards Kannapolis and Concord. So if you live in the area, definitely let me know what you saw today out of this fun little event. And we'll continue to bring some snow today into Virginia, but uh, going to start to wind down. And then we turn our attention to the next system. It's been clipper season, folks. These Alberta clippers have been working on through and packing a punch. And there's the next one up towards Montana currently. That's going to also dive south and east and bring some snow, potentially even for parts of the I-95 over the coming days. Let's time it out for you, show you the setup, and then talk about how much snow could fall with this setup. As I mentioned, this is a classic Alberta clipper, at least right now, meaning there's not a whole lot of energy in the atmosphere associated with it. While we do have that snow falling up towards Montana and even into portions of the Northern Plains, there's not a lot of energy associated with the system right now, at least in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. It's going to change though, as we move this ahead into the time, notice what begins to happen. You start to get this very well-defined trough that begins to elongate here. You can see this a little piece of the polar vortex. There's the core of it up towards Canada and up towards the Great Lakes. But as I said, a little piece of energy here on the left-hand side of your screen is going to start to dig south. It's going to begin to strengthen. And I do think by the time we get to Sunday morning and into Sunday afternoon, this is going to be a more defined trough with an area of diffluence. Here's your trough and your area of diffluence or that area of lift in the atmosphere. I'll circle it here uh, right over the coastal sections of the Northeast. So uh, while this won't be a very big hitting system, I think there will be just enough juice to get some snow out of it, including for some folks that maybe really haven't seen that much snow so far this year. Let's take a look at it with our latest high resolution model data. So you can see this will start to dive down out of Montana and into the Dakotas. This is by this afternoon and into the evening. Even another little band of snow getting going with the main piece of energy by the time we get to the afternoon and overnight up towards the UP of Michigan, portions of Wisconsin, and even down into the mitten of Michigan. Go get some snow out of this. Uh, you keep it going into the overnight and into tomorrow morning. You can see this is when the energy really gets going. You're waking up on your Saturday to snow into portions of South Dakota, back down through Iowa, southern uh, Minnesota. It's uh, a classic case of the rich getting richer. A lot of these places have already seen snow, but yeah, sure enough, more could be on the way. And you keep it going. And I think through Saturday afternoon, this spreads into uh, northern Illinois, northern Indiana, Chicago, Springfield going to get some snow out of this. Indianapolis could see snow here for your Saturday afternoon. And then much of the state of Ohio, potentially as far south as Louisville, seeing snowfall for your Saturday afternoon and evening. This is 5 p.m. Eastern. And uh, it doesn't stop there. Check it out, folks. It keeps moving east. If you're watching Philadelphia, New York City, New Jersey, into Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, I've read your comments. I know you're wondering where the snow is. Well, 
here it is. I do think by the overnight of Saturday and into Sunday morning, we could get a nice band of snow that starts to work on through. And what we'll need to watch for is can a little piece of coastal energy, coastal low pressure get going with this? It's possible with that upper level lift I showed you. And this could throw back even a band of some heavier snow. And I do think accumulation will occur with this system now through a, at least Sunday. Then the question becomes, though, well, Gerald, how much snow could accumulate? Yeah, let's talk about it and take a look at some more model data. Well, speaking of snowfall totals, this is the latest forecast from the National Weather Service. I'm going to use this for uh, areas further out to the west, and then we'll show you some model data uh, once we get uh, out towards the northeast and mid-Atlantic. So I do think a good band of two to four inches of snow through uh, much of South Dakota and even into portions of uh, southwestern North Dakota is going to be a likelihood here over the next day or so into this region as we get that band of snow to develop. You keep going further south and east, and it's the same thing through much of Iowa. I think the heart of the state, two to four inches, right through the heart of Illinois, likely to get some snow. Now you'll notice uh, with the NWS forecast here, the heaviest band of that snow right through the heart of Illinois, Indiana, and into Ohio, where uh, even three to five inches of snow could fall. They're not as excited about Chicago. Uh, they're expecting this track to be a little bit further south in some of the data I showed you. It's a possibility, but I would not be su uh, surprised at all if this shifted north a little bit or even further south a little bit. You're going to have to keep that in mind. This could go either way, a slight direction, but we're not going to see huge swings uh, from this point. And then you can see some lake effect snow up into the upper peninsula of Michigan and down into the western, shor uh, western shoreline, excuse me, of uh, the mitten there over the next 48 hours. And uh, yeah, my friends in Ohio, even down towards Louisville, the NWS forecast for about four inches of snow in Louisville. That's a pretty good number, but again, we'll need to watch if this shifted north just a little bit that could mess with the totals either way though i think the highest number is going to be three to five plus even three to six plus inches of snow there through portions of central indiana and southern ohio even into portions of the mid-atlantic going to get some snow into uh, west virginia and uh, the mountains of virginia itself and uh, even up here into uh, western pa into erie cleveland uh, even up towards buffalo and then towards the tug hill now, this is the NWS forecast. I'll start with that, and you can see this only goes 48 hours out, so this goes through Sunday morning, so this might not get the entire event, but it gets most of it. And check out the forecast, folks. Yeah, about two to four inches of snow in Philadelphia, uh, down towards Baltimore, D.C., about one to three. New York City, a couple of inches of snow showing up. So I think this will really get a lot of folks into the holiday spirit, but I'll caution you, things are going to shift a little bit here. Let me show you some actual model data. That was the NWS forecast. Uh, this is uh, one of our FE3 models. This is actually going to take over the NAM spot here soon. And uh, you can see its forecast shows uh, in terms of snowfall for the Kuchera output. So this should be a pretty good guesstimation in terms of what the model shows. A good band here from uh, D.C. down to Baltimore and into southern New Jersey of a couple of inches. But you can actually see the tracks a little bit further south than that NWS forecast. Doesn't get nearly as much in New New York City or Philadelphia or up towards Connecticut, Rhode Island, or Massachusetts. That's one model. We'll show you another model. This is the NAM model. Uh, and uh, the NAM a little bit further north with its uh, boost of snow gets a good couple of inches in D.C. up towards Philadelphia. Southern New Jersey, a big winner here with up to three inches. Long Island with an inch or two, but still not that much up towards Boston, Hartford, and Providence. Then comes the HER. Uh, this is one of my favorite models. I think this is one of the more reliable ones. This is the one I showed you with the output. And it has that burst of snow for Philly uh, into much of really all of New Jersey, I'd say. And then into Long Island, southern Connecticut, with everyone getting about one to three inches of snow. Some spots getting a little bit more. So yeah, I do think this will be probably the biggest snow of the year as it stands right now, at least for places like Philadelphia and into southern New Jersey. What we'll need to watch, can this get all the way up towards Boston, Hartford and Providence? Can we get the shield that far north uh, and uh, D.C. and areas down here to the Chesapeake? Is it a little too far north? Is it shift back south? Those areas circled in black. That's where we have the highest uncertainty right now. Uh, but uh, the area shaded in here. A circle into yellow. Well, let me recircle that a little bit. I'd say really right into here. That's where we have the highest confidence from Philadelphia down to Baltimore, northern Delaware, and into southern New Jersey for a good little snow event. Probably won't be winter storm criteria, but nonetheless, it is snow in December. So there you go. For everyone wondering where it's at, I do think some is on the way. It's not the only thing on the way. Brutal cold as well. Let's talk about that Arctic shot of air, how cold it could get, how long it'll last, and then whenever we could flip back to the wintry side later on in the month. I know everyone likes the snow part of winter. They don't like the brutal cold part as much. And uh, trust me, I get it. I hear you. But we need to talk about it because this could be uh, pipe bursting levels of cold, to put it lightly. 
Here it comes. These are our temperature anomalies. You can see it's oozing down out of Canada. By the time we're waking up and uh, getting into your Saturday afternoon, that Arctic air mass with temperatures of 20 to even some places 30 to 35 degrees below what you should be this time of year, uh, working into the northern plains, into the Midwest. Not a bad Saturday down in places like Charlotte, Greenville, Spartanburg, Atlanta. Much of the deep south pretty good. It won't last for long, though. You go into your Sunday afternoon. And yeah, here we go, that brutal Arctic air taking over everyone east of the Rockies outside of maybe the Sunshine State down there in Florida. So if you need a vacation, maybe uh, Tampa Bay, maybe Fort Myers, not a bad idea for this Sunday. Uh, but then even you go into your Monday and even down that far south, the cold air works in for your Monday afternoon. The good news is by the time we get to Tuesday and Tuesday afternoon uh, pictured here, uh, we start to rebound pretty quickly. And that's been the theme is these shots of cold air have been very uh, transitionary, if you will, or uh, might be a better word to use than that. But either way, they've been in and out and then they've come back and out. So it stayed cold because we keep getting them. But it looks like we're running out of those shots of cold air for at least a little while. Before we're all the way out, though, how cold are we going to get from this one? Well, let's talk about it. These are high temperatures uh, today, so when you all are watching this, I told you sub-zero, sub-zero highs up into North Dakota and into Montana. Again, not bad down into the deep south where we've got 70s, 60s, and then 50s up towards uh, the mid-Atlantic. Uh, but uh, again, if you've got the warmth now, don't get too excited because by the time we get to Saturday... High of 14 into Chicago, a single digits into Iowa, into the Dakotas, Minnesota, sub-zero up towards International Falls. Still chilly into the Northeast, but like I said, Saturday not bad still into the Deep South and even portions of the Mid-Atlantic. A bit of a rebound down into the Chesapeake. Then you get into your Sunday, and this is whenever it really starts to shift east, a high of about 6 in Springfield, Illinois, 24 for a high temperature in Nashville. Yeah, winter is here for sure, folks, 28 in Memphis, uh, 40s into Charlotte, we've got 30s up into Virginia, uh, right around freezing or below that into the northeast for your Sunday afternoon. You're waking up Monday morning, below zero lows into the Midwest, single digits into the Ohio Valley and portions of the Mid-Atlantic. Teens as far south as Columbia, South Carolina, Atlanta, Birmingham, uh, down into Jackson, going to be right around 20, freezing temperatures all the way to the Gulf Coast. So, yeah, sure enough, the cold air is going to be here. You're going to feel it. But as I mentioned, uh, I don't think it'll last very long. Why is that? Well, you'll start to notice as we go further ahead into time, here comes that shot of cold air into the weekend. It's out of here, though, folks, and the ensemble show a ridge building back in, warming up by the middle of next week, and then maybe another shot of some storminess and cold air uh, by about a week or so from now. And then after that, at least as of right now, in the 7 to 10 day range, the ensembles continue to show this heat dome building, and uh, you can see those temperature anomalies after this shot of cold air. If I switch it back so we can go far enough out into time, uh, you can see there's that big shot, and then we warm up, and uh, we are, we're nice by the middle of next week with a lot of orange on the map. And then, yeah, another shot of some chillier and colder air showing up for the Midwest and Northeast by next weekend. But that, too, doesn't look to last too terribly long, at least as of right now. So when do we bring the cold air back? Well, let's talk about some teleconnections and in the video out there. Well, we haven't had to talk teleconnections for a while because we've been in it. We've been in the cold air, we've been in the snow, but with a break, at least of some sorts, uh, looking to loom here about a week or so from now, or even less than that, I should say, when do we get back to the cold side and will it be back in time for Christmas is probably the number one question on everyone's mind. Here's the good news. The MJO, that Madden-Julian oscillation we talked a ton about back in November, if you remember, we are in a very favorable phase, folks, and we look to just hang out here into phase eight, kind of dipping into seven at times, but mostly into phase eight through what looks to be really the rest of December. That would normally signal cold air, however... The NAO and the PNA and some of the other weather patterns are not playing as nice. You can see we've got this big spike back to a positive NAO here uh, right through the middle of the month, all the way out through at least about the 20th or so. That means that we're going to likely have some ridging and uh, more zonal flow than anything across the country. And like I said, we could even get uh, a bit of a heat dome to develop. I don't think it'll last forever, though. That's the good news. The longer we keep the MJO in eight, that's going to give us better chances of uh, keeping this, um, I wouldn't even call it a heat wave, but this warmer period down to a minimal or maybe not lasting forever. You don't want to torch for weeks on end in the winter. You start to lose some of those better snow chances. We could even melt some of the snow right before Christmas, which obviously you, you don't want to see. The GFS ensembles and the European ensembles, for what it's worth, do show a dip back down to the cold side right around the 20th into Christmas and especially by the end of the month. So 
like I said, I don't think this will last forever. We need to also watch the PA and some other things, but just to kind of summarize, big cold shot right now through the weekend, warm up by the middle of next week, maybe another shot of some chillier air by next weekend for the Midwest and the Northeast as it looks right now. Then we probably warm back up again, but I'm hopeful that by Christmas time, we can start to moderate this again and maybe get some more shots of some cooler air. Until then though, I would enjoy some of the warm air that we do have between now and then because it has been brutally cold, folks. And I know you don't want the warm up right at Christmas, but uh, a lot of us probably could use a little bit of a break from that cold and snowy pattern. All right, I uh, appreciate y'all tuning in today. Uh, I know I did not have a video the past two days. Wednesday, I had a uh, last minute doctor's appointment show up, so I apologize. And then I'll be honest, yesterday, uh, the best word to describe what I did was hibernate. <laughs> I think I uh, finally had a day off from life for, for the past uh, three months, and I took advantage of it, slept way more hours than an average person should, so feeling a lot more uh, rested and uh, ready to take on the world from here on out uh, through the Christmas season. Some other things, um, I know I promised a calendar. If you're still interested in ordering a calendar, let me know down in the comments. I know it's a little late now, it's the middle of December, but if you would be interested in a 2026 calendar, let me know and then I'll put it together and I'll get it out by this weekend, I promise, if that's something you folks still have interest in. And then, yeah, the 2025 Rewind, I've got it in my head. Don't worry, I'm working on it. If you remember that from last year, I uh, should have that out probably sometime between Christmas and New Year's is when I think I'll post that. And uh, we'll do it like we did last year. We'll have a premiere. We'll all watch it together and it uh, should be a fun time. All right, folks, y'all have a great one. Stay safe out there. Stay warm with this Arctic blast and I'll see you all next time.